So first, let's compare illness anxiety disorder with somatic symptom disorder. Illness anxiety are people that are hypochondriacs. They're just worried about having some serious illness in general, but not necessarily any symptoms. Versus somatic symptom disorder, they actually have a symptom that's causing them anxiety and distress. So, for example, if someone has been short of breath recently, they're like, oh my god, I have lung cancer. Or if they've had headaches more frequently, they might be worried about a brain tumor, things like that. So somatic symptom disorder, they have a particular symptom that's causing them this distress. Illness, anxiety, they're just worried about things in general that's wrong with them. And both of these, to treat them, you just do regular PCP follow-ups. That way the same doctor can kind of keep monitoring them instead of them getting a million dollar workup every time they go to the doctor. All right, so next let's talk about conversion disorder. This is also known as functional neurological symptom disorder. For this, a patient will abruptly have neurological symptoms without an actual neurological cause. So for example, let's say a patient went through a really distressing significant event and then suddenly they say, I can't walk like I'm paralyzed. But you do a whole neurological workup and you find that there's nothing actually wrong with their legs, like they should be able to walk. Or like, let's say a patient says like, I can't hear, but you do an audiogram and they're actually fine. Treatment for this is CBT. Next, let's compare fictitious disorder with malingering. For a fictitious disorder, patients are intentionally making themselves sick or coming up with symptoms to assume the sick role. Versus for malingering, they're also making up things, but it's for an external gain. If it's like getting time off of work or getting money somehow, things like that. So for a fictitious disorder, let's say a patient intentionally injects insulin into themselves to become hypoglycemic to go to the hospital to get care, to assume that sick role. You can also get Munchausen by proxy. So let's say a mom is intentionally making their son sick to be able to come to the hospital and assume that role as a caregiver. For malingering, this is when you want to do like a door test. You want to kind of see how the patient's acting while you're not in the room. If they're just sitting on their bed, lounging, eating, no distress, and the minute you walk in and they're like, oh my god, doctor, there's all these things wrong with me, you can kind of suspect malingering. Also, another sign for this is if they say like, oh, I have a 102 fever at home, and then they don't let you take your, their temperature in the hospital, or they're complaining of like severe abdominal pain, but they won't let you examine them. Those are classic signs for malingering. 